My sermon is entitled, Spiritual Gifts. Let me open us in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, as we gather here for come and see worship, we praise you for the ability to come here to worship. We have that we never fail to give thanks for the strength of body and spirit. To you goes all the glory, the suffering of your son on the cross, done to save us. We are ever mindful of all the sacrifices on our behalf. To you belongs the glory and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. This sermon is entitled Spiritual Gifts because our faith is a spiritual gift from above. It is not about congratulating ourselves about our own abilities. It is about glorifying in the highest. Um, I believe it is important to take the human element out of the equation. There are many, thank you, Joseph. Ah, there are many stumbling blocks to faith. One of the major ones is pride. Faith is not from our own strength or desire. It is a gift from God. Our first Bible passage, passage is 1 Peter 4.10. Let us read together. As each one of them has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Any discussion of spiritual gifts centers around the concept of grace. Grace is God's gift. We are recipients of grace. It is a blessing bestowed on us. The next passage put into pers puts into perspective what role grace and faith play in our lives. Let us read this together. For by grace you have been saved through faith and is not of yourselves, it is of the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. I believe that this second uh, passage is the most important passage in describing what spiritual gifts are. From this, these two verses, 8 and 9, we can see clear that, clearly that we are saved by grace through faith. It is not from ourselves. It is God's gift to us. A bit of my own personal story and to illustrate uh, why we do not boast about works. Um, I've been involved in two major charity projects. One was in Rwanda for the building of a Christian university and aid to the poor people of Rwanda. It's a country ravaged by volcanoes, uh, past uh, tribal uh, difficulties with the Tutsis, Tutus and Futsis. Uh, its government is very unstable. They don't have eggs, chickens. Uh, they don't have food. It was designed to build a Christian university. Uh, Fausta Netambura, a Biola graduate, was the head of it. Unfortunately, that project has not gone anywhere and is moribund right now. Uh, the second that I've been involved with is more tangible at Sun Ministries, a food bank and uh, a ministry to Africa and Asia and to the local Orange County population as well. That's a more tangible project. But I don't want to go into depth about charity work that I've been through because as the passage in Ephesians 2.9 says, it's not by works that we are saved. It's not something to boast about. To me, this is just illustrative of 
what works God can allow us to do. God can take away our power and strength to do anything, and roadblocks can be put, put before us. So it's not for us to be frustrated by that. We have to accept God's blessings, the energy, physical and spiritual, to be able to do anything on this earth. Um, another point I want to illustrate about two, Ephesians 2.9. Um, I have gone through physical problems in my life. Uh, I had to walk with a cane for years. I could not drive for a long time. I'm now physically capable of doing a lot of things. I was at the doctor this last week, and my blood pressure is high, and I have referrals to a cardiologist and an ophthalmologist, and I have diabetes, and I'm overweight. But God has given me the strength to function, to be amongst you today, the blessing that I feel in this house, the family that we have established in this house. Our pastor and his wife are currently in Korea. I have great concern for his children. I want them to be fed and taken care of. We miss our pastor greatly. I used to send uh, katok messages to him. Moksanim anyang aseo. Hello, pastor in Korean. My messages are now, Ne sarang hanen moksanim onomasa. My loving pastor. We miss him and his wife. Everyone physically present here and watching online understands we are all sinners. No one escapes the law of sin and death. We confess our sins to God for that. Our next Bible verse shows this clearly. Let us read. Romans 3, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 3. For we have all sinned the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. The glory of God and his grace comes as a gift through his Son, Jesus Christ. It is Christ's presence that brings God's glory to us as a gift, justified by faith through grace. We have to address the use of our spiritual gifts. We can't waste them. We have to honor them. Whatever we are given on this earth, our very lives, we have to honor that. Don't take it for granted, people. If you waste your energy on foolish things, which we can all be tempted by, whether it be television or movies or the distractions of this world, we're not all going to be deep in Bible study 100% of the time, but Everyone who knows me knows that in the early morning hours, that's when I'm in Bible study. That's my time. Other people have different times. Accept whatever clock schedule you have and feel the grace that you're able to do it. Um, we have to address the use of our spiritual gifts. It is important to know that our understanding and ability to accept Christ as our Savior comes through the Holy Spirit. Acceptance of Christ into our heart brings forth the Holy Spirit into us as well. And it's the Holy Spirit that illuminates, rejuvenates, gives us the power to go along. Our next verse puts that into practice. Let us read. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord 
except by the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is the, the true uh, rejuvenating element, the true uh, giver of grace and faith to us. We accept Christ as our Savior when we confess our sins in deep confession, and then we receive the Holy Spirit as a package with our acceptance of Christ into our hearts, and we work ever gratefully towards his glory through that acceptance of Christ and that feeling of the Holy Spirit within us. The rejuvenating factor, the strengthening, the completion, as best we can, of our faith. We, none of us can really claim humility. We may say we're humble servants of God, and we may try. Maybe now you'll hear me better. I don't know. Um, Humility is not something we claim. Uh, we may think we're humble, uh, but in God's presence, we're not humble. Uh, we strive to be servants of the Lord. We try not to be uh, arrogant, and as the previous passage from Ephesians says, not boastful, not of our works, not of our efforts, Every strength, everything we've done comes through the glory of God. And uh, our next phrase, verse, help explain further. Therefore, okay, but to each one of us was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And the uh, measure of his gift. Uh, it's not something that we as humans can fathom. The embracing love of Christ is beyond our human understanding. It's something that comes to us through his grace, through faith, through the strength that we are given and through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no matter what the nature of our gift may be, some of us are talented in music, some of us are talented in art. Some of us are talented in sports. Some of us are talented in study. No matter what the nature of your gift, it is the same spirit that is the giver of the gift. We cannot ignore where our gifts come from. Uh, we, like any gift, if you get a gift on Christmas Day, your parents give you a gift. You're happy. You're happy to open the package, to see what toy you're given, or what they've given to you. We can be so blind to our spiritual gifts. Uh, as Ephesians 2.9 says, we can be boastful. And that's the element of pride that comes in. Pride is something that does not... Uh, coincide with faith. Pride and arrogance, stumbling blocks to faith. It is our desire in nature to try and uh, glorify ourselves, uh, but that's not the way people. Uh, the glory goes to God, not to us. We're mere mortals here. It's important, I think, to take the human element, the ego, out of the picture. Strive to work towards God's glory. 
be God's servants, not servants themselves. Uh, a difficult task sometimes, but we need to work these things through. I want to illustrate our next verse. Eight. Therefore it says, when he has ascended on high, he led captive the captives and he gave gifts to people. We can all be captive to the desires of this world. The distractions of this world can all lead us into uh, bad decisions, uh, misplaced uh, ideals, misplaced uh, feelings. Um, it is important, I think, that We recognize the giver of the gifts. And we give praise properly to the givers of the gifts. Try, people, to be servants of God. Try to listen to God. A part of that is listening to your own body. What you're physically capable of doing, what you're physically not capable of doing. Um, I frankly, I'll go back to my personal story for a brief illustration, was doing too much at some ministries, going there three to four times a week, physically too draining for me, um, especially the food bank work. I'm not physically capable of everything. I think mentally I can do a lot, but physical labor is not for me. So I have to be balanced in my approach to everything I do. Very balanced. Uh, the energy we are given is a gift from God. That's why the title, Spiritual Gifts, recognize, recognize where it comes from. Don't be foolish. Don't let pride and ego get in the way. Understand the source of your gifts. Um, there's another passage for us. No, it's we're back on Ephesians. That's the last one. Uh, I'll I'll read it to you. It's not on the board. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord, 1 Corinthians 12, 5. All the energy we have to do the Lord's work and to gather in his name is a gift, praise, that we have to praise to the Lord. Um, if we accept the Lord in our presence, we may be able to transcend this world and find the ability to glorify God. That is a challenge, and uh, we are human, and we fall short in the presence of our Lord. But when you feel the gift within you, when you feel the strength coming to you, then you can begin to appreciate it and understand what you're capable of and not capable of. The Lord will help you with balance. The Lord will help you through things if you let the Lord, if you open your heart to the Lord as best you can through confession, sometimes on your knees, sometimes in tears, whatever moves you. As the Lord moves within you, those kind of things can come through to you. Those kind of things can give you strength and work towards your benefit. 
if you allow the Lord to give you that strength, to understand the gifts that are present, to understand the glory that may come to you. Finally, now we get to the last verse that will put it into perspective what we've been talking about tonight. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive to the captives and he gave gifts to people. Ephesians 4, 7, and 8. It is the degree of Christ's gift, his measure that we receive grace. The concepts of grace and spiritual gifts are intertwined. This is our blessing. I thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Um, so at this time, let us pray together. Uh, let's hold on to the things that I was share with us today. Uh, first thing I uh, that stood out to me was to uh, take the ego, take the self out of the equation. Um, I think sometimes that's hard to do because sometimes we want to take credit for what we think we're doing, but really it's to the grace of God. And so today just ask God, Lord, um, it's because it's almost impossible to uh, be humble ourselves and commit ourselves to humility. And we can't do that except through the grace of God. So just seek for His grace at this at this time and let us pray on those things as, uh, as one together. Let's pray.